This is lesson 7-7, -7, graphing absolute value functions. So some review of vocabulary as we move forward, and this will be some new vocabulary for you as well. When you take the absolute value of a number, it makes the number what? You said positive, you are correct. graph of an absolute value function will look like a B. Parent function is the simplest type of graph for any type of function. When we work with the parent function and we change the parent function, we get different graphs. Parent function for absolute value functions is going to be Y equals the absolute value of X. Graphs will change based on operations that are performed to the parent function. And the act of doing such, where we are basing our changes to the parent function, is called translating. Let's take a look at the graph of the parent function at this point. So you should have a graph set up. And we want to set it up with a chart and use the middle of the graph for our x values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now, we talked about on the last slide that the graph should look like a V. Let's see how that happens. So I'm first going to fill in my chart as I did here. And we took the absolute value of each of these. Clean up some of this. Didn't appear correctly. And so we now have these points for the graph, and I'll graph those points right on the graph. And you can see that it's going to form a V. And there I have it. Of course, I want to label all of my functions that I graph, Y equals the absolute value of x. Now to move from here, we're going to take a look at what kind of changes we can do to the parent function as we move forward. At this point, what I'd like you to do is pause the video, and I'd like you to copy down this chart, because we're going to examine with this chart what happens when we do these particular things to the parent function for absolute value. Now, what you'll notice is the H, and in this case, H will be any number. So pause the video at this point to see what you have to do to get that chart written down. Now, I'm going to use my graphing calculator here at the right. I have the parent function in my y1, and I'm going to take a look at what's going to happen to each of these things as we move forward. So you can see there's my graph of the parent function. I have it so that I can see what happens when we make the change to the parent function. So now I'm going to go down to y2, and I'm going to do my first one, which is adding h to the outside. Again, as a reminder, we go to the math and num to get the ABS, and that's how it appears. And for the first one, I want to add H to the outside. I can pick any number I want. I'm going to choose three. When I graph it, I can see that it moves up three units. So when we add to the outside, it's going to move up whatever number you did, units, so H units. The function will look like this. Y equals the absolute value of X plus H, whatever number you picked for H. Let's take a look at the second one as I'll move down here. And now I'm going to first take away my plus 3 on the outside. I'm going to move it to the inside. And I'm going to graph it to see what happens. And it's moved to the left for this one. We're moving left H units. Again, I picked 3. This function is going to look like this, y equals x plus h on the inside. Let's move to the next one where I'll take away the plus 3 again. And now I'm going to move back out to the outside. This time we'll subtract 3. And 
I'll graph it, see what happens. And yes, it's going to be the opposite of adding to the outside. I'm going to move down H units. So this will be Y equals X, absolute value of X, and then minus H on the outside. Moving to the next one, we're going to now subtract H from the inside. I'm going to go over and I'm going to take away my, actually I'm going to put minus 3 on the inside first, and I'll take away the minus 3 on the outside. And I'm going to graph this. And you can see this one moves the opposite of adding H to the inside. We're going to move to the right H unit. This will be Y equals the absolute value of X minus H all on the inside. Doing the next one, I'm going to take away my minus 3 on the inside and we're going to multiply when H is greater than 1. It does not matter whether you do it on the outside or the inside. In this case, I'm going to put it on the outside and I'll hit graph and you can see this one, it gets thinner. We're actually pushing it towards each other. We're getting it thinner. And the function at this point will be looking like y equals h times the absolute value of x. And for my next one here, I'm going to put in a fraction to see what happens. And I'll graph it. And that gets wider. It looks like we're pushing the lines down with our hands. That one gets wider. This one we're going to mark as 1 over H times the absolute value of X. And then we'll do the last one here with multiplying by negative 1 on the outside. Now, this one we have to do on the outside due to the fact that we have a negative. If we didn't have the negative, if we had the negative on the inside, it would become positive. And, of course, look what happens here. We have it reflecting over the x-axis. And this one will be y equals negative 1 times the absolute value of x. You could also just have a negative there if you wanted to. So anytime we have absolute value graphs, it can be one or more translations of the parent function. We don't have to do just one translation. It could be a lot more. When you're doing the translations, the order at which you translate does not matter. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. So let's explain how the graph of y equals the absolute value of the quantity x plus 1 minus 7 differs from the parent function. The answer to that is is that the graph is going to move one unit to the left, and that is due to the inside plus one. We're going to move one unit to the left, and we're going to go down seven units because of the minus seven on the outside. You could also say for this answer, the graph moves down seven units and one unit to the left. Again, order does not matter in your description. Here's an example for you to try. Pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to try it on your own. So we talk about translating the parent function. I'm going to graph my parent function here. This is not necessary for you to do if you don't want to do it, but I like looking at what's going to happen difference-wise. And this is y equals the absolute value of x. Now, keep in mind, sometimes they may ask you to graph it. But in this case, I'm not asking you to graph it. All I'm asking you to do at this point is just to translate it. Plus 2 means we're going up 2 on the y-axis. So this whole graph is going to get pushed up to where this is my bounce back point. And we just create the V, exactly the same as it was before, just pushed up 2 units. Here's another one for you to try. Pause the video at this point. And again, please reminder that it says explain how for this one. So pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to graph it, as well as explain how it relates. 
So for this one, we are going to move one unit to the left and four units down. So one unit to the left and four units down would put my bounce back point right here at negative one, negative four. And then I'm just going to work it all the way up in a diagonal in both directions. I'm going to label my function and explain how it relates the graph move four units down and one unit left. If you're having any issues with any portion of this lesson, please make sure you are emailing me or consulting me in class.